Thanks, everyone. Um, so yeah, my name is Rob Lauer. I'm a product manager at Telerik. And hopefully you're here for Firefox OS, the what, why, and the how. Um, so 30 quick seconds about me before we get started. Like I said, I'm a PM at Telerik, and if you've heard of us, you probably know us for our JavaScript framework, Kendo UI. Uh, we also just released the Telerik platform, which is a warning marketing speak coming up here, but it's a modular app development platform, and which sounds kind of lame, but it's actually pretty cool, worth checking out. Prior to Telerik, I spent 15 years as a web and mobile developer for the University of Wisconsin, and while at the UW, I was primarily an ASP.NET web forums developer, so don't judge me. Um, and yes, before I had kids, I used to love snowboarding. Somehow, I still love them, though. Um, if you need to reach me afterwards, you can find me on Twitter at rdlauer. Otherwise, email me directly, rob.lauer at telerotech.com. Either are totally fine with me. So let's start at the beginning. What is Firefox OS? Well, a lot of you probably know that it's a new mobile OS from Mozilla. And the project started about two years ago when it was first called Boot to Gecko. And the primary goal of the project at the time was to build a standards-based mobile OS that would help bridge that gap that exists between native devices and web development, right? So this is really intriguing to those of, us, those of us who are web developers because here we have a new open standards OS that was allegedly friendly to this enormous population of web developers out there. So we hear a lot about Firefox OS being open, but what does that really mean to us as developers? Well, the first thing is gone is this idea of proprietary code, right? Mozilla has done away with the app silo model that exists today, and what I mean by that are when we have iOS with Objective-C, Android with Java, Windows Phone, C Sharp, and XAML, and what they're trying to do is bring the power of native app development to web developers. And so what I mean by that, of course, is that you're using web technologies, HTML, JavaScript, CSS, to write native apps, and in fact, that's the only way to write apps on the Firefox OS platform is with the HTML5 stack. And you also use JavaScript to interact with native device features. So we know it's open source, built on open standards. The way you interact with these device features uh, are through these open web APIs. And unlike other vendors, the app distribution process is entirely flexible. I'll talk about that in a little bit. So we have an incredibly developer-friendly platform, especially for those of us who are web developers. And it's also important to note that Firefox OS does run on relatively low-powered devices, so meaning cheap and easily accessible, uh, but still very performant. And I'm glossing over a lot of details, of course, due to time constraints, but you know, what do we know? What are the key takeaways? Well, we know it's a mobile OS based on the open web, right? Open source, open standards. We know that HTML5 apps are native, in fact, the only way to develop apps for the Firefox OS platform. And we know that we interact with native device features through JavaScript. So this may sound familiar to some of you. If any of you are PhoneGap or Cordova developers, well, it's really easy to compare Firefox OS to PhoneGap. Um, and for those of you who don't know, PhoneGap provides the ability to write an HTML5 app and wrap it in a native container, which is that PhoneGap or Cordova, and then install that app natively on a variety of platforms. And Firefox OS support is actually available in PhoneGap right now. So this whole idea is not unique, right? This idea of running HTML5 apps natively on devices is no longer uh, unique to PhoneGap. We have many platforms now. We have Chrome OS from Google, BlackBerry 10, haha, uh, Microsoft win uh, with uh, Windows 8 and WinJS, and Ubuntu Touch, and Tizen, which is a new OS from Samsung. Uh, all these platforms support running HTML5 apps natively on, on their devices. So getting back to Firefox OS, what else do we need to know about developing these, these apps? Well, there's two big things, web APIs and web activities. And like I said before, the way you interact with native device features are through a series of APIs. And when I say APIs, I'm talking about like geolocation, SMS, contacts, alarms, that kind of thing. And yes, it's all JavaScript based. And it's important to know that the APIs, or rather the access to the APIs, differs based on the permissions required. So some APIs like alarms, and geolocation are available to all apps, uh, but others like the context list requires elevated permissions and possibly a different type of app, and we'll talk about that in a second. Oops, forgot my slides there. Uh, web activity is a web API, it's important to know, but it's also it's an API that allows you to delegate an activity to another feature on the device. For example, if I'm developing an app that has a, maybe I need to pick an image from the image library, for example. That's considered a web activity because I'm delegating that, that uh, image picking activity to another function on the device. So just so you know what those mean. 
All right. So remember I just said certain APIs are available with certain app types. Well, this is where things can get a little bit more confusing, so let's talk about the different types of Firefox OS apps. First of all, we have a hosted app. Now, a hosted app is an app that you can host on a web server. You can literally take your HTML5 app today, uh, add a manifest file to that, and I'll show you what a manifest file looks like. It's very simple. And upload that to your web server, point a Firefox OS device to that app, and they'll be able to run it in the context of their device. So the advantage to this model is pretty clear to those of us who are web developers, right? It's, it's familiar. Um, it's, it's a familiar process for us because you are, uh, it is like running a website, basically. Uh, it's easy to distribute these apps. It's easy to you know, market them. You're, you have full control over updates. If you need to tweak the CSS, for example, all you're doing is uploading a new CSS file, and your app is immediately updated, right? Because everyone's running it from that remote server. Now, the downside with hosted apps, it's still running like a website, right? So your user must be connected to your server. Uh, they have limited access to certain web APIs due to security reasons. And there are network performance issues potentially, right? Because you are downloading those assets over the wire as needed. Now, the other type is a packaged app. And the packaged app at its core is the same thing as a hosted app, right? But instead of leaving your files on a web server, you actually package them up into a zip archive. And you add another manifest file on the outside of that, that package, which again, I'll show you in just a minute. This then becomes installable on the device. So this follows the more typical mobile app installation model that we're all used to. And the advantage of packaged apps are pretty clear. Um, you are installing an app on the device, so you should see better performance because everything, all the assets are on the device. Uh, additionally, your apps are available offline by default, so that's important to remember when you're developing the apps. The downside, of course, is that they are then more difficult to maintain. If you, any iOS or Android developers in the crowd, you probably know that it can be like pulling teeth to get your users to update your apps. Um, and the situation's pretty much the same for Firefox OS. And also there's three different types of plain, pa or sorry, of packaged apps. The first is a plain packaged app, which is basically what I just described to you. We also have a privileged packaged app. Now, this is an app that has, um, that requires API access that are considered privileged APIs. Now, this type of an app has to go through a re review process like you're used to with the iOS and Android app stores. Um, but if you need to access a privileged API, and two examples of those would be uh, contact manager or device storage, stuff like that. Um, and finally, we have certified packaged apps. Now, these, these are apps that provide a core function to the device. Uh, the vast majority of us will never write a certified packaged app because a certified app, for example, would be like a new web browser or a contact manager, something that provides a core feature, like a core default app that's going to be on the device. And in fact, I don't think Mozilla even allows third parties to develop it, to develop their certified apps yet. So as promised, uh, I told you I'd show you what an app manifest file looks like. Now, this is required for every Firefox OS app. It's just JSON formatted file that contains metadata about your app. So you can see we're just providing a name to the app, uh, a description of the app, a launch pad to our root document, basic developer information, list of icons, and a default language, right? And this, as it exists right now, is all you need to run a Firefox OS app. So you can take your HTML5 app, add this file to it, and then it then becomes installable on the device as a hosted app. Now, there's a lot more you can add to this. For example, if you need to request permissions for privileged APIs, those are going to go here as well. Now here's what a packaged app manifest looks like. Um, and I'm going to repeat myself here, but if, if we have a packaged app, of course, we're packaging up in a zip archive our HTML5 app along with our, the last manifest file. This one, however, stays outside of our archive, and it simply points to that package. So again, we're providing a name to the app, a literal path to the package, a version number, and developer information, and that's all you need. So it's really, really simple. So the logical next step is to talk about app distribution. And what's interesting about uh, app distribution with Firefox OS is that Mozilla does not look at this as one size fits all, right? So they provide options for us. Primarily, we have the Firefox Marketplace. Now, this is what most of us are going to use for Firefox OS apps. This, this does follow the traditional app store model, iOS, Android, Windows Phone. Uh, it's nice because you get that traditional visibility of the marketplace. They'll take payments for you. They'll handle ratings. They'll categorize your apps for you. 
And it works with any app type, whether you're using a hosted or a packaged app, anything works fine with the marketplace. But you can also roll your own. There's nothing preventing you from hosting your own hosted or plain packaged app on your own web server. What's nice about this is you have absolute control over the app, right? You can take your own payments. You can even create your own Firefox OS app store if you want to. There's nothing at all preventing you from doing that. So plenty of options there. Now, a logical question is, well, if I'm hosting a plain packaged app on my server, how on earth do I get Firefox OS users to install it? Uh, the answer is actually with some simple JavaScript. And it looks more complicated than it needs to be because it's, uh, you know, it's wrapping on the screen here. But basically, just so you know what's going on, this is some example JavaScript I may include on a website. Uh, and the first line just is some feature detection to make sure uh, the app that, or the device that I'm using is a Firefox OS device that can install app packages. And then I'll point you to the line that starts with var install app equals navigator.mozapps, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that's what actually prompts the users to install the app on their device. And finally, we have success and error handlers that we can optionally use as well. So really, you can simplify it to be just a couple lines of code if you want to to prompt an installation of a, of a packaged app. So with relation to Firefox OS, there's a few other things you may hear. You may hear the terms Gonk, Gecko, and Gaia. And just so you know what those mean, uh, first of all, we have, of course, our hardware. We have our device layer, right? And Gonk sits on top of that. And Gonk is the hardware abstraction layer. So this is a Linux distribution with low-level APIs that speak to the device. That's literally all I know about Gonk. Uh, Gecko, however, is the Firefox rendering engine. And yes, this is the same rendering engine that, it, that is in um, your Firefox web browser. This is the application runtime for Firefox OS. This is the context in which your Firefox OS apps run. And finally, we have Gaia, which is the Firefox OS UI. And the cool thing about Gaia is that it's actually built with HTML5. And I'll show you what Gaia looks like in a minute in the simulator. In fact, I'm going to do that right now. So I'm going to take a few minutes to show you uh, some of the tools that we use to develop Firefox OS apps, uh, primarily the Firefox OS simulator, which is a free add-on for uh, Mac and Windows. Let's start this over. All right. So the simulator is a free add-on for Mac and Windows versions of Firefox. It works as part of the new App Manager that is included in Firefox as of version 26, I think. And the way you access the App Manager is through uh, typing in about colon app dash manager. So my screen size is a little limited here, but hopefully you'll be able to see everything that's going on. So in my app manager, I happen to have three hosted apps pre-installed. And I already have the simulator installed, of course. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you the simulator, because it's, it's kind of cool to see. And when we initialize the simulator, we choose the OS. Oh, cool. It's a good size. So here's our Firefox OS simulator. And what's cool about this is that it's actually a pretty darn good simulator. Um, and it's very performant, too. It's not like booting up an Android emulator or anything like that. And what you can see is that the interface itself is similar. You know, it's, it's familiar to those of us who are used to iOS and Android uh, smartphones. There's a lot of pre-installed apps that we can play around with. Everything's fully functional. The simulator itself can execute most web APIs and web activities as well. So it's it is what it says it is. Uh, just to show you what the Marketplace app looks like, what's cool about this, too, is that I can actually go into the Marketplace, and I can, I can browse, and I can actually install, say I want to install Facebook. I can install it to the simulator and see what it, how, it, how it acts. So kind of fun to play around with that. But what I want to do is I want to show you three different apps really briefly. And the first one, the first one is a really tiny little I don't want to say crappy, but it's, it's just a really simple app that I wrote that just consumes some data from Reddit, right? And let me show you the code first, because that's good enough. Uh, I'm not going to go through the code, but I just want you to see that, uh, yes, I'm using jQuery. I think that was kind of mandatory for this conference. Um, I'm also using Kendo UI Mobile, which is my company's mobile JavaScript framework. And you can see here, I have, what, 75, 76 lines of markup. And my supporting JavaScript is a whopping 50 lines. So there's nothing special about this app at all. It is a pure HTML5 app. It could run on any browser anyway. The only thing I had to do was add one of those simple manifest files that we saw before. And let me start my simulator back up. And 
And I'm going to go ahead and update this, which is what installs it on the simulator. So here's my app running, again, simple HTML5 app running in the context of Firefox OS as an app. So in this app, what I'm doing, I'm just showing a list of subreddits or categories, and then I can, um, I can click or I can tap on a category, and I can see a list of the top posts, right? Nothing, again, nothing special about this, although I got to be careful with what I click on, I suppose. Um, so that's it. Just to show you like a really brief example of how easy it is, like if you're going like the really ghetto version of getting an app up on Firefox OS. Now the next step up, I'm going to show you another really tiny app that I wrote called the Battery Checker app, which I'm going to start selling for like 20 bucks. <laughs> All right, so the Battery Checker app, it's two different pages, two different views. Uh, but what, one thing I want to point out with the Battery Checker app is that, um, well, two things. One, it's using uh, the native, well, I don't, I don't know quite know how to frame this, the, the Firefox OS UI guidelines, I guess is how I'd put it. And these are just guidelines. You're not required to correspond to any, to any certain guidelines to write a Firefox OS app. But I was able to get the fonts, the CSS, and JavaScript assets from a website called buildingfirefoxos.com. And it's a fantastic reference if you're thinking about building your own Firefox OS apps. But this one's really simple. I'm just going to click on that button. I get the native transition, and I get uh, some, some battery information. And this is actually accurate, right? 94%, 94%. So now, the, now this isn't that interesting. What's more interesting is to see the code that is supporting this, right? So what I'm going to have you look at, if you can see, yeah. So basically lines five through nine are the important part in this app. This is an example of how I access a web API with Firefox OS. All I'm doing is looking at this navigator.battery object. And since this is not a privileged API, I don't have to request permission. It's just available to me by default. And then I can access some properties of that, like battery.level to get the, you know, the current level of my battery, whether or not it's charging, the charging time, discharging time, all that good stuff. So this is how simple it can really be to utilize these web APIs and really provide a, a super native feeling app that's interacting with the device itself. All right, so one other app I want to show you, and this is not an app that I wrote. This is called the Firefox OS Boilerplate app. This was written by Robert Nyman at Mozilla. Um, this is a great example of an app to look at if you want to investigate how to actually use all the web, web APIs and web activities. So let me boot it up quick. It's not much to look at. It's similar to the app that I wrote, but let me get it installed here. And I love, too, how quickly it is to get an app to not only start up the simulator, but to get an app installed takes like zero time. So here's our boilerplate app. So again, nothing special to look at, but you can see that there's a button for every web activity. So for example, if we want to see like opening a video and what that looks like in the simulator, it works just fine, of course. We can also look at some of the web APIs like our notification. We can check our internet connection. We can check our battery like I just did. Uh, we can look at geolocation data and so on, right? There's also some privileged APIs that you can take a look at too. Now, what's better is to look at the code again to kind of get, get an idea of, I'm gonna scroll to the top here. And I wanna show you what a web activity looks like. And again, the code is inc incredibly simple. If you have any JavaScript knowledge, you can probably pick this up pretty darn quickly. So the idea here is I'm, instantiating this new Moz activity, and I'm, I'm picking a, a, a file with these types here, right? And then once I do that, once I've handed that activity off to um, my image gallery, and once I've picked an image, then it fires this success handler that allows me to do something with that image, right? So it's incredibly, I mean, I've probably said simple too many times already, but it really is simple to utilize these activities and these APIs. And there's, you can just page through and see how you access I mean, di you know, here, dialing a phone number. It's like you know, two or three lines of JavaScript to dial, dial a phone number, sending a, sending a text message to somebody, adding a new contact. I mean, it's pretty darn cool what you can actually do. 
Now, a couple of things about the simulator. You can debug your apps in the simulator. You can also, if you have a Firefox OS device, which I know zero people who have Firefox OS devices, but if you have one, you could attach it to the to the uh, to your machine, and you can debug your app on the device itself. And oh, one other thing I want to tell you is that uh, these will uh, the app manager will actually verify your manifest manifest files for you and show you any errors or warnings. So, for instance, with my battery checker app, I received a warning, which looks a little bit better if you have a bigger resolution, but you'll see that I'm missing an icon section in my manifest file. So it gives you helpful information before you actually try and publish your app. So I have a couple more slides for you. All right. It's not working. Weird. There it is. So let's talk about the why, like why you would want to develop an app for Firefox OS. Um, I'd like to start with a quote, uh, and I'll read it for you. The iPad is the dumbest thing ever. It will never sell. It's just a big iPhone. That was me about four years ago. So <laughs> clearly I'm not the fortune teller you may be expecting, um, but I can at least give you my two cents on why I think Firefox OS is a legitimate platform to develop on. Um, so I can't tell you Firefox OS is going to be on 25% or 2% of devices by the end of the year. Uh, I can tell you a few reasons why I think it's, it's at least a compelling platform. One of them being, are you already using PhoneGap? Do you have a PhoneGap app out there? It's going to be pretty easy, uh, I should say a pretty low risk proposition for you to uh, publish your app or port your app to Firefox OS, right? So pretty easy win there. We also may see Firefox OS take over. I mean, this would be ideal if they could take over the low end Android market in the US and parts of Europe, right? Those damn Android 2.x devices are killing all of us, and so it would be great to see Firefox OS take over there. But really, in the short term, we're seeing the most potential in emerging markets, and that's where Mozilla is starting their marketing push. So, primarily, they're starting with Latin America, parts of Europe, and Asia. Uh, and mostly because we have 2 billion people coming online via mobile over the next few years. And even today, globally, feature phones still outsell smartphones. Um, so there is a huge, huge market for low-end smartphones across the world. Now, for me, it's a little bit different. It comes down to the reason I like developing for Firefox OS is that it's fun, it's easy, and it's nice to know you're supporting the open web, right? So what's next? If you are interested in developing for Firefox OS, I highly recommend you take a look at buildingfirefoxos.com. Uh, like I said, they have a lot of uh, assets, pre-built things for you to use, CSS, JavaScript, all that kind of good stuff. Take a look at hacks.mozilla.org, which is Mozilla's blog. There's a lot of Firefox OS content there. A couple of guys on Twitter you should follow for sure, Robert Nyman and Christian Heilman. They both work for Mozilla, and they tweet and blog a ton about Firefox OS. And I do occasionally still blog about Firefox OS. Um, but that's about it. I don't know if I finished really early or not, but I think that's it.